This conference will now be recorded. Right, we were talking about till uh, renaming a collection in the last class, right? So we know that limiting the documents, uh, you have to just apply the limit. It will read the top three records if you are limiting. Skip means it will skip the top three records and read the rest of the records and sorting the data in the particular column. Right, this we have seen. Renaming a collection also we have seen. We're going to spend time on the ordered bulk insert and unordered bulk insert. This is something uh, you need to understand and the large systems, uh, you know, it has impact. When you do it, you have to coordinate well with the project team. What exactly the difference between them? Uh, this is a ordered bulk, this is unordered bulk, just assume okay. So let me write. Unordered bulk operation. The name itself is saying almost the same thing, what it is going to do but we need to understand how it works so ordered bulk operations will not occupy all the cpu it will catch a thread and use the thread for inserting the data one then two then three then four then five the data will go in the sequential order in the background okay so you don't lose the sequence that is a good thing with unordered bulk all will go in parallel it can take all your CPU when the operation is going on. It can take all the available threads for its operation. Why? Because it's unordered. The inserts are in parallel. This is a serial, one after the other. This is our in parallel. One, by the time two inserted, three inserted. By the time five, three inserted, uh, four inserted, five, ten, maybe seven, eight. Data will be not in the order. It won't come in the order in the when you do the bulk operation the vast data in fact because it is doing the parallel inserts when you know it is inserting whatever the thread is you know getting the better speed it will write the rate out in before the previous value data can be jumbled that is one thing and this will be the data in the sequential order you don't lose the sequence that's a good thing one more thing is you can do this operation during the production during the production you can do this okay you can do this during the production because it is not occupying all your CPU. It is only consuming a thread and then doing the job. It takes quite a long time. That is a disadvantage, of course. If you want to get the data to be loaded immediately, it won't do the job. It takes quite a long, depends on how much uh, number of records it has to insert. It does so quick. It does so quick, but it can consume all your CPU and create an outage also during the production. So both have the advantages and disadvantages. You need to consider the trade-off. If they're giving a downtime for the bulk operation, go and do the bulk, unordered bulk operation, good thing. Now they are not giving the bulk, uh, downtime, but still you wanted to do during the business hours also, you can do the ordered bulk operation. There is no impact to the business because it is not going to consume your CPU a lot. It can take a thread and do the job in the background slowly one after the other in a sequential manner. It won't jumble the data. So good thing is uh, with the added bulk operation, it, it does uh, it divide your input into batches. Like uh, I'm going to insert one lakh records, as in my case, one lakh records divided by you know thousand. So thousand thousand yard. So it will go in hundred batches. So your input data, the bulk data, will be divided automatically into thousand. Each transaction will go in thousand. It automatically divides. You don't have to worry about automatically divides each batch into 1000. If it is inserted one to 1000, it releases the locks on the first 1000 records. It will start with the 1001, 2000, 2000, and then again start releasing the lock. And it is it follows the interleaving lock when it is loading the data. That's a good advantage we have. As the data is keep doing it, you still access the data what was inserted. During the unordered bulk, there is no lock, you know, like release it will keep the lock on the data till it finishes the job there is no interleaving concept so both have advantages and disadvantages okay you need to consider the actual trade off and do that so what i'm going to do uh, bulk and ordered bulk and ordered bulk
right so here ordered bulk unordered bulk so i'm going to keep this text anyway so in whatever i was talking here so when we executing ordered list of operations mongodb groups the operations type and contiguity continuity means it is maintains the data in the sequence it does not break the sequence with ordered bulk uh, ordered operations list mongodb execute the right operations in a serial manner one after the other it does not skip the order each group of operations can have at most thousand transactions so if you are giving more than thousand it will divide your input into automatic batches you don't have to worry about the system itself will take care of that if the group exceeds the limit mongodb will divide the group into smaller groups of thousand or less it will divide your input this is a great advantage we get out of it in fact so i'll keep all this text around here for your reference i'll share this this should be quotes so you don't see the great difference when we play around with the small data okay if i run this uh, as it is in mongo it accepts the data i am inserting the data so it is inserted three records you can see that how many are errors out how many are inserted how many are upserted if there is a data and it is matching on something it is going to update it upserts so upserted and matched and modified it is giving all the details in fact with your with your batch so you don't realize the great difference as we have very less amount of data but how it works that is what i wanted to just show you that so this is a bulk operation this is another another with another operations list mongodb execute the operation in parallel in non deterministic fashion non deterministic fashion means it does not follow the sequence there is no kind of rule that it has to go in a uh, sequential order it just goes in a parallel fashion whatever the thread is faster it will write the data faster but whatever is slow it will write on slow so in that case what happens data jumbled data will get jumbled out and you don't see the data in the sequence so with the unordered bulk operation the operation in the list may be reordered to increase the performance so uh, you cannot reorder anyway you can create the index index will create order of the data automatically we will see that we will see that in our course in main detail in the index performance topic this is a ordered text about it so you have to explain the trade offs which one to be good and which one to be nothing is something fixed you have to go with this only that only it is situational you they cannot wait data to be loaded you know like uh, in a day or two if they want to do it immediately you go with unordered both have its own advantages disadvantages right so you cannot say this is only the uh, always the solution for your data insert so both the cases can be used situationally all right so any questions around this let me know sir in the in which cases we follow this ordered and in a like, unordered uh data can be you know when people are actually having huge data to load into mongo in the back end they got the data from different clients they wanted to append that data to database okay so when they're doing it if they are do it ordered operation they no need to have a downtime on the system at any point of time it goes in the sequential order based on the data it might take quite a long days and days to load the bulk data you have a tb data i wanted to load in the you know like in my own phase like i don't have ari bari to just load the data into database i can take a week time so i can go with a serial fashion where ordered bulk operation but here i wanted to make the data so quickly available on the system i'll take a downtime at a time frame i'll run for that 4 4 5 hours maybe that can load the 1 tb data of in 4 4 hours instead of one week so situational again when you do the bulk operation unordered bulk operation there is a lock on the collection you have to wait that entire operation to be 
completed that is why it is called downtime like you need a downtime in the collection to do the unordered operation ordered operation you don't have to you don't have to have a downtime it will keep the data in the serial fashion and it will follow the interleaving lock whereas unordered it does not follow that it will jumble out the data that is one disadvantage it will create the downtime in the collection and another advantage right disadvantage uh, the advantage is only the quick quick load of the data so when to use what is situational there is nothing fixed getting yes uh, one thing uh, you said in order there is a law, there is no lock so there is no downtime no no uh, order yes it, lock will be there it will be interleaving lock in fact but the user can have the data user can access the data while order operation is done yeah yeah they can that's what but is there any data integrity like that kind of thing like batteries it's a uh, no 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 actually it follows locking a thousand records if you are doing transaction thousand records will be locked if you are trying to hit on this this will be locked for your op bulk operation other rest of the data is available if thousand records are done with operation it will leave the lock and the next thousand so that way it the other data is available for operation when the it is working on thousand operation thousand documents at any point of time to lock only thousand rest will be open for the operations that way oh. interleaving lock that way it will uh, you need to take what is the best suit to the situation there is nothing fixed is a situational call fine schema design let's go to the next module schema design this is very important for understanding sake schema design then data modeling you can say data modeling or schema design whatever you say uh, data modeling so I'll tell you everything in practical, then I'll take you through the slides. That will be easy to make you guys understood about it. So now what I'm going to do, I'll take you one use case. One use case it is. So this is the query where we are creating the collection explicitly. Creating the collection. With the validation. So I'll explain the syntax, don't worry. So here what we are doing, we are creating a collection. So db dot create collection. We know that create collection. What is the collection we are creating here? I'm going to create a collection called uh, student. This is a normal syntax to create a collection. But I want validators. I want to validate something on the collection. Then only take the data. So I'm going to apply validator. Just validator. So this is a usual syntax we have seen already. Creating an empty collection with a db.create collection. I'm applying the validator. Validator, multiple validator we are going with. So validator or operator I'm applying. Or any of the condition is matching just take the data our operator our operator need an array right because it need multiple inputs one input and a comma second input in the first in input i am giving the phone phone number it should be string generally phone number no need to be string but i i wanted to show it intentionally how the validation works so dollar type it should be string i am defining it number also should be string I'm defining data type also what to be how to be inserted email address email address should follow a regular expression regular expression called it should have mongodb.com at the end it's mandatory mongodb.com at the end I'm giving dollar at the at the end I'm giving dollar means it should end with this then only it will accept the you know email email domain mongodb.com should be there at the end of the email else it won't accept so we are creating a collection called student we are applying the validator the validator is phone number one field should be there with the phone number it is mandatory 
and that field should have the string value not the numeric value and the email address should be having the mongodb.com at the end so now if i create this collection as it is cls db go collections i don't have student i'm creating it so unknown error reg why it is so syntax is correct only right oh reg x sorry it should be reg x not just reg regular expression reg x means there right now it got created we created a collection with certain conditions it's not just the you know uh, db dot student if i go on student if i'm trying to insert the data it won't accept the data because you you impose some validations on the collection it should have a phone number or email address one field must because validator we defined with the r operator if one of the field must and one of the field should follow condition also if i go with the student number example one and name just for the use case i am trying to enter some data here so here i'm going with the hurry i'm trying to insert document validation field right you have a validation you need to follow it it is mandatory even if i go with the here email gmail dot uh, uh hurry dot hurry at the rate gmail dot com still it, it is document of validation is failed if i give example instead of gmail i'll give mongodb.com this is following the rule at the end mongodb.com is there it will accept the document so it is following the validation before it is taking the data you impose some validations the validation must be followed through if not your the insert would fail this is called you are designing the schema by default mongodb does not look for any of these kind of conditions but you are explicitly creating for your business use case only if the age is less, greater than 18 only take it else don't take it you see if yeah. you are uh -huh. okay, one, one question uh can i put uh, in place of or can i plus uh and or how it is i need both yeah. conditions. you go with the you take out the r and give the one after the other then it will be acted like a und operator nothing else we discussed okay. right yeah and uh, another maybe option and this collection only table or any other thing we can put in mongodb collection it is a table equivalent to table it is equivalent uh, to table. Any, and my question is any other than table any other thing or only table in we say similar terminology in mongodb uh, collection right. see everything goes into table so you have to have the validation on the table only like collection only there is nothing other uh, thing you can define the validation view view also you don't say collection or no view only for readable not for the writable here oh, okay okay got it okay okay what happened i'm not able to log into this link link is working for everyone right please try okay which link the class link oh, so jagan joined right are you saying that you did not you know to able to join with that link what reason the morning also someone complained what reason for some people it is not working i'm not sure so fine okay so it took the data so in a view you just read the data by creating the logical you no know, joins kind of thing but here the the validations can go on top of the collections in fact in the mongo so db dot student dot insert if i'm going to insert s number two s name example uh, amar and then phone number address also i'll add this time 
address maybe i'll just keep it as chennai just for the use case here phone number ph one e and the value i'm giving it it will take the data no it won't because i defined the phone number in the validation as a string though phone number can be a numeric but i intentionally added it as a string now if i go and add the quotations around it it lacks up the data so it is looking for every insert and it is going through the validation to take the data in certain situations you just cannot take the data uh, everything that comes into system you have to filter it on something right so when you have to filter you have to apply the validations on the collection it is an explicit it's not implicit in fact so creating the collection with the validation where did i do here it is so i'll replace this here this is how you create it and once it, the validation is applied if you're trying to load the data it is not taking it is absolutely going through the validations we, are, we can see that in this case is not followed here it is not followed gmail.com but here it is followed it is accepted it here you gave the phone number but you did not get the quotations here it is accepted it so if you impose a validation in the collection you definitely have to follow it so how do i know what kind of validations are there in the collection db dot get collection infos and the collection name what is the collection name we have here the student so knowing the validations and the collections you have to run this command so validator and the collection there is r operator r one is first thing is this phone number should be string or there is one more condition like a email should follow the mongodb.com at the end so finding the what kind of validations we applied in the collection we need to use this command so finding what are the validations applied on the collection Right, so now this is what you have to use it. Next, I have the data already. Let's make one more scenario. Show collections. Uh, show collections. DB dot teacher dot. I'm inserting the data without any validation, so it can accept any data in any format. Doesn't matter to the system. T number. Uh, I'll en enter some data and then show you. A collection is not following the validation but we wanted to apply the validation after later on how does it follow because you forgot to add but later on data got messed up and uh, you wanted to add it okay address just keeping Hyderabad. so second record Third record. Follow this. Just I'm giving some random data for the use case. We'll take one more record and then start. Um, right, this is enough. 
so now if you look at this it is not following any validations as of now right it is not following any validation show collections db dot teacher dot find okay now i wanted to impose the same validation on this one the validation that we had so next thing is adding the validation to existing collections which are not following any validations as of now so here adding validations to existing collections which uh, were not which were not following any validations with existing data it has the data already but we want it to apply the syntax is same almost like this but a little change this one so instead of this create collection you have to use a run command run command call mod call mod use one extra layer of log bracket here i guess let let me see if it is not worked we will rectify the syntax command is correct but the syntax can be wrong okay it's closing that closing this maybe you don't need this we have the syntax in the module anyway uh, call mod okay it is going inside it so it is saying that we need to go inside the floor bracket okay okay then okay here we need one more flower here it says it's closing the validator i guess this you don't need it a validator because it's already in flower bracket call mod we don't have this thing C-O-L-L-M-O-D. <coughs> oh, C-O-L-L, -L, not C-A-L-L, -L, right? Call, it's not call. It's call a collection modification, right? Call, C-O-L-L, -L, right? Right, this is the right syntax. So, This is exactly the correct. You are modifying teacher. Let's hear what I used. Student is already having it. I need to change this on teacher. So before I change it, let me read this. DB dot get collection infos name teacher. You don't have any validations as of now okay now i would apply the validation on the teacher collection it has the data already what happens to data if you have already data applying the validation these validations you it won't apply to existing data it applies to only upcoming data all the time so now this is the right syntax for us for converting our teacher right now you go and find the same now the validator applied so i'll keep these two before and after you understand when you look at the notes okay 
now let's do the operations this is where you get the more understanding how the validation works you see this one validation level is strict validation action is error if the validation is failed it, it has to error it should not accept the data strict means i have the data in the collection i have the data in the collection the data is not following any validation though you have validation applied just now so validations will apply only to the upcoming data once the validation is applied on the collection it does not apply to the existing data but if i'm trying to modify teacher update if i'm trying to update here what i'm trying to update example t name t name to Ravindra, just for the case use case so t name here harinad so I'm changing this one to Ravinder. How do I set? Set operator I have to do. We know that. We discussed this in the last class already. Set uh, T name to Ravinder. So can I do this? You cannot. V validation failed. When you when the validation is strict, when the validation is strict, when you do update, and you do update also should follow the validation. Insert also should follow the validation. At the same time, the existing data does not is not following the validation but if you are updating that existing data also should follow the validation that is mandatory so now if i wanted to get that update to be done i need to add phone p h o n e field must be matched the phone number again should go into the uh, if i if i example if i'm not giving quotation still it will fails if i use the quotations it accepts that update i'm modifying it so if i go and read the data this is following the validation now so eventually the existing data also will catch up with the validation okay so if you wanted to relax this on the existing data but only the upcoming data then you go with you will change the uh, uh, validation level we'll see that so for now if i'm inserting the data teacher dot insert okay so t number seven t name Manish and address phone something. If I do it, it will it take the data? If I hit it as it is, will it take the data or not? Tell me. It should not take because it is not following the validation. Either it should have a phone number or it should have the email address. So now I'll go and add email as Manish at the rate gmail.com. Still, it won't accept the data. When it will accept the data, when you give it mongodb.com only on the email side. Right? You guys getting what I'm trying to do here? Yes. So once you apply the validation on existing collection or a new collection anyway you have to follow the validation now i don't want to apply the validation on the existing data which is not following the validation but i definitely wanted to follow the validation where the validation already following so whenever the validation level is strict validation level is strict all updates all inserts should follow the validation there is no exception for any operation but when the validation action to be moderate when the, it is moderate the data which is not following the validation no need to follow the validation for updates not for the inserts again updates you no need to follow the validation and the data on which you are not following the validation this is confusing statement understand this See, if I'm trying to update this one, can I update without a validation? The question, teacher dot update. Again, I wanted to change this because also to be, to be Ravinder. S num, T number two, you have only one. So I'm setting then T name to Ravinder again. So set uh, T name to Ravinder from Vikas to Ravinder. It won't accept. Why? This is not following the validation but your update need to the need to follow the validation but i wanted to relax this I, I don't want this validation on on the data which is not following the validation already i want to relax validation on the collection of documents which are not following the validation 
so to do that you have to change the validation level from strict to moderate so uh, here it, i clearly written so a statement this is why i i picked up the notes validation level strict after applying the validation level strict every new operation need to follow the validation which which means new inserts or updates on existing data also need to be follow the validation when validation uh, in this one so next uh, and next level is validation level moderate when the word moderate all operations should follow the validation except the data which is not following the validation already the data whatever is actually not following the validation then no need to go through the validation when you update so setting the validation level to moderate applies the validation rules to inserts update and new insert record it won't validate the update command that run again is the data which was entered before the validation and not following the rules not following the validation so you don't follow this unless i will show it so if you if you look at this i was trying to update this document from vikas to ravinder but it is not allowing me because my update is not having the either phone number or email address that's why it is not allowing but i'm going to change i'm going to change the validation level this one changing the validation level from strict to moderate maybe i'll make it below this text relevant there only so <clears throat> changing the validation level from strict to moderate at the end you have to apply the validation here validation level i guess not there here i guess let me see validation level moderate so before and after get collection so you have a validation level strict now i am running come on got copied just highlight is enough to copy it so now i'm inserting it okay moderate validation level what is it in fact moderate what they keep m is a capital so this crying for that maybe right it is correct then so the syntax is correct fine now validation level if you go and check validation level moderate so before we applied this was the case i am keeping everything for your reference okay we applied then we verified now now understand so cls db dot teacher dot find now if i am trying to update this record this record db dot <coughs> teacher dot find sorry update update on the second record i want to update here it will update because why it will update because this record is not following the validation so where in moderate validation model if the existing data does not follow the validation update no need to follow the validation if existing data is following the validation it must follow there is a relaxation so set set 
st name to ravinder i'm updating the second record from vikas to ravinder if i hit it it accepted it you go and verify the data got modified but this record following the validation no so under moderate validation model whatever the data is not following the validation when you are updating that no need to follow the validation if you wanted to add the validation it is up to you but it is not mandatory that document need to go through the validation when you are updating it why because it is not following the validation already this was confused me in the beginning when i am learning in the beginning days i confused what is strict what is moderate i literally confused but now uh, it took time to understand but i'm giving you a fair idea here if validation level is moderate then the documents which are not following the validation that no need to go through the validation when you are updating it but if the document is already following the validation already following the validation update also should go through the validation so now if i am trying to update this record which is following the validation already so t number 1 s name to ravinder 1 to modify and here comma uh, phone number phone right we have the phone which need to follow phone i am updating it to non string which is violating the rule clearly if i hit it oh accept it ah huh, let's see it accepted oh why it accepted can anyone tell the spelling was wrong p n o n e it is took as a new field come on that was my mistake sorry but anyway if i do this this title fail because i am violating the rule what it is already following the rule you are breaking the rule so it will not let you to break that is what is moderate mean in a strict to validation every update every insert should follow the validation there is no exception for any operation but in a moderate validation level if the document is not following the validation existing data then update no need to follow the validation but if the existing data is following the validation update also should follow the validation understand the statements very carefully then only understand the difference else you don't understand getting or not getting say something yes oh thank you at least i mean you understood that sana for me so this notes you need to go through this notes you need to go through under moderate all modifications should follow the validations except on the data which is not following the validation already you don't have to okay for updates anyway already for updates okay starting setting the validation level to moderate applies validation rules to insert update and new inserted records it won't validate the update it won't validate update command that run again is the data which is entered already before the validation not following the validation already so uh, if it is not uh, if you don't follow that follow this the data which is not following the validation it is not following i can update this records without the validation because they are not following the validation but i cannot update this record without the validation without you know violating the uh, rule set because it is following the validation already here also i cannot do it if i change the email address from manish mongodb.com to gmail i cannot do it that is also purely violation on the update side so if i go back to here at t number 2 i no need to change the name i am trying to change the email address directly setting email to manish at the rate gmail.com oh, what happened email e a m i l oh, i accepted it we should give mango no mango it, it should ask for in fact but something happened just a minute email manish at rate oh it is there 
Oh, sorry. It went to the second record. Uh, this record. Second, second record. Uh, that's why it is not following a validation. Anyway. It picked up. So I need to apply this on the seventh record. Right. Validation failed. So you have only. Uh, I have mean, one question here. If second record already inserted, right? I mean, Manish and that it. Uh, for example, if it is a second record, uh, second record Manish under Arthur it MongoDB. If again I need to update on second record, will it violate? Like I mean, so will it work? I mean, yes, yes, yes. You know, it will violate, right? Because it is already following the rule. Once it started following the rule, you definitely follow the rule for update. Okay. Okay. If again we need to change the second record, also it will be violated. Right? I mean, yes, now it is a not Mongo, it is a Gmail something. So it will violate, right? Yes, yes, yes. See, as long as the existing data is following the validation, you must follow the validation for update in the moderate also. But if the record okay. is not following the validation, then it won't look for it for the validation. That okay. is a condition. Got it right? Okay. Yeah. Right. Good enough. So now, if it is violating the rule here, so uh, basically uh, this is, should not be the case. Like uh, you, you have to relax this. We use in a different way. So let me go and read. Mongo error log once. SVC Mongo 36 was service account, right? I feel CD uh, PS Mongo. I'll, I'll show a few things here. All right. So now, um, here the well, violations are happening. Uh, violation still accepted because it is not falling. Now, uh, let me talk about this next level. All right, this thing. There is a validation action. Validation action also, we have two things. Validation action error, validation action warning. Generally, we don't change this moderate in, in the real world. We'll keep it to strict only. We don't change that, but you need to know uh, interview purpose. We have to keep that, but uh, I'll change it back to strict. You never relax it. Mostly we don't relax this. It is what I've seen. So you should relax if you relax and the existing data won't follow the validation slowly. If you want to relax, it is a business to case to case impact so that you cannot do anything. So now it is strict back again. Now if I strict back again, what happens now? Let me show you this. This should be if you didn't follow last time, you should follow this time. If I do the update DB dot teacher update. And this number four. T number four. Okay. I'm setting the name. I'm setting the name to Kumar, whatever it is. I'm just trying to go with. Okay. Will it accept if it is a strict validation level? It's a question. No. Uh, no, there is no phone number and uh, this. Right. Every mail. update should follow it. It will fail. Good enough. But what is the use case here is I have a bulk data I wanted to load in the Mongo bulk data that I got as input. So it will fail definitely are many reasons because every document may not follow the validation. In that case, your load will fail, but I need to take that load badly into the system. Then I'll validate later on. First, I need to take the data in, into the system. That is my requirement. So so changing the validation action from error to warning. So this will be used sometimes, not all the cases. I'll tell you what is a use case we will use it.
changing the validation action from error to warning we'll call it war just one this only uh, use case is like uh, when you have to take the bulk data from the external sources into mongo when the validations have uh, applied and the collection your load will fail most of the time some other someone will do some mistake the load will create the mess again you have to verify till what point it is inserted it is a huge headache in fact failing on the load so to make it successful that temporarily the the kind of bulk operation you have to switch off this rule what is the rule validation level 2 error to warning but you can actually monitor it is your data followed or not later on how how that is possible let me explain so now validation action here action from strict to warn i'm going with the warning don't reject the insert which means warn means but write the event in the error log i'm changing this so now if i run this it is applied if you go and run collection infos you will see that validation action warning Good enough so now understand this is a very very important use case especially on data when the load bulk data they will definitely fail now i am modifying this manish record db dot teacher just for the use case update uh, t number to seven and i'm setting his email address set email to manish at the rate gmail.com there is a val validation it is strict it is going through but it will accept the change when it accepted the change it is violated the rule so it go it will make an entry here in the log so document fail validation on the collection teacher dot cloud dot teacher and the modification t number seven and uh, t name is manish the, this one the 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 data got modified to this okay if i keep inserting more and more data it is bulk data assume a case so not the update inserts because this bulk operation inserts a lot of data at one go so t number to be eight t name just show in the address something so every insert is validating the role right this every insert is validating the role now if i go and check here i'll find every validation so what i'll do i'll let the load run when the load is coming and you know when the bulk load is coming i will not fail it failing a load is very messy thing in the mongo you have to you you have to know that where it is failed and you have to start from where it left off when the data is huge finding it and doing is a very headache job so let's take the data first into the system and then later on check the error log so how do we check the error log is really following or not the thing right so here i'll pipe it and send this report to again to the client fail or uh, instead of fail go with the validation in the grip so your data is not good we accepted your data but it it failed on these many entries we have to take this output and give it to the client you gave the bulk data and we accept it as it is by relaxing the validation and the collection but this much data is not followed validations next time please rectify this it should not happen so there will be at least few records you 1000 times still there are few records which doesn't follow the validation that at least we need to aware them okay they are not following it kind of 
let the system let the data as it is you should not change the data in the system that will create the integrity test integrity issue so you should not change it but you have to tell them data is violated and once data is load done then you have to change the validation action back to the error mandatory again it is only temporary thing you have to add it on and change it back to again error because if people are doing the bad data insert oh i should change it back to error which is not good okay it always it should be error else there is no meaning you create a validation validations on the collection now if i go and insert the data okay it will it will not accept the data fine where i am trying to insert right this one it will fail it will fail on every insert why it is not following the validation anymore so we will relax the validation on purpose from validation action error to warning to accept the load as the data is very big we don't want to fail that operation take the data temporarily and right after that validation the data is loaded then you go and find that whatever the data is violated the rule there will be few records anyway we need to highlight them so they will escalate themselves like who gave the data and who did not followed there are instructions to go through this so some other way they'll they'll mess it up it's usual on few records it will happen because of that few records entire load will get failed at randomly and finding it where it is failed is very become you know a headache process that's why you make that validation relaxed for the load when the load is going on once the load is finished then switch it back to error and find out what are the things are not followed the validation this way we will uh, fulfill the requirement when the validations are there in the collection i guess you guys following what i'm trying to say yes or no yes this is very important on larger systems they do load the data in the back end because they receive the data from different sources and we have to load it through the bulk operation so that time you definitely relax it if not your your validations will fail how do i know validations are there in the collection before i load so i clearly shown that db dot collection infos this will give you that what are the validations are applied so if it is there you have to verify before and be ready with that change the validation action to warning and inform them we are changing this to here if anything is violated we'll catch it and give the data what was fall not followed we have to explain them if the people don't know that we have a streamlined process we know that we are doing this since ages so we know that we'll change it we will run it and we'll find the data will inform maybe you know in the beginning days we got 100 then it it reduced to 20s then it reduced to one or two now at least one or two will violate still every time they escalate the people who are not doing the job diligently that is their job our job is to finding it out and telling them everyone following yes sir we here we are skipping like uh, using one but after uh -huh. that we need to again uh, update uh, using that permission no no don't do that don't do that it is a data that came from the application side itself and to Maybe say that require... will modify again again we do to no, insert no, no. this is third party data in fact they gave us to load it their data it is so okay. uh, on the data what is missing they know it anyway they, when they look at for the audit we'll send it back to this data to audit in fact they'll themselves escalate they should give us a refined data to load into the system but in usual case few records will definitely miss out okay so when they it get missed out they will tell us if they have to rectify you should not change anything you have to only your job is to inform again they rectify new data in the next batch they'll rectify and send it back that way just identify and notify that's how it is yes 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 you should not change anything it's a business okay. data if they missed it they have to rectify it in the next batch hmm. okay Exactly. it happens usual but you should not change as a dba you, your job is to only inform them when the bulk data happens you relax this warning okay 
and then load it and change it back to error again for the normal operation should follow the validation it's mandatory only the bulk we are relaxing it why because we don't want to fail and randomly and troubleshoot will take quite a long rather that you just uh, pick up the data like this and send it back to them they can rectify in the next batch and give it to the refined data again it will one or two records will come again again you send it this process usual we are seeing it mostly we see this many a times daily we don't do it monthly three four requirements will come like this loading the data in the back end and when there is a validation is there we will relax and run it we'll find it and send it to them it's a usual process okay okay fine so this is all about the schema uh, validation if you know if you understood that's enough we are done by default uh, the validation should be in strict mode only right i mean so uh, yes, by default it is a by default yeah. it is strict you have to change it uh, as per your requirement okay okay so data modeling again talks about embedded data model in the relational data model you have the relations like this one table for primary key for n key all the relations will be created there are no relations in the mongo as i said in the beginning one entity data should go into one document only like you are having a relations you have to create embedded document one side one document you know within a document so you keep creating more and more documents within the parent document to keep the data locality to should not divide the data and then operate on it in the mongo it has to go into the single document so in mongodb our data is a flexible schema unlike sql database where you must determine and declare the table schema before inserting in the rdbms mongodb's collections do not enforce the document structure by default they won't but you can impose schema validation this flexibility feature facilitate the mapping of document an entity an object each document can have different keys and types yes it can have but when you load the data similar data into one collection it should have similar structure almost though data can accept in any format but generally you have a student student information is similar for every student so that way it will be mostly similar in practice however documents in a collection share similar structure see this is what this is what i was talking about so similar entities data go in a similar structure mostly maybe down the line you might add some extra fields but at most it is same the, the key challenge in data modeling is balancing the needs of application performance characteristics of database engine and data retrieval so you create the model very complex the indexing model performance model also will go a little complex side you need to understand that uh, back end side also when you read the data patterns patterns need to be designed properly to create the proper indexing model we will see that what is pattern what is indexing model indexing model is same like sql server in the mongo if you follow mongo indexing you follow the sql indexing also i'll cover it don't worry when designing the data models always consider the application usage of the data queries updates processing of the data as well as inherent structure of the data itself generally you need to consider what they are doing with the data mostly insertions updations if they are doing lot of reads then you have to have a proper indexing model if they are only doing lot of updates but reads are very rare then don't have to introduce in too many indexes and nsl to flood the system right so embedded document capture relationship between the data by storing related data in a single document you have a relation but within a document you're not dividing it you're keeping inside in it so this also talks about model data model mongodb documents makes it possible to embed a document structure in a field and array with a document in a field sub field like embedded document array similar family uh, entries like phone numbers email addresses accounts anything as such grouping documents in the same kind of together in the same collection allows the data locality you have to keep everything in one document that's where you can maintain the data locality in general use embedded data models when one to one one to many relationships are between see in rdbms one to many you definitely go with the you know this kind of architecture like foreign key primary key relationship but in the mongo you don't have that in general embedded embedding provides better performance for read operations as well as ability to request and retrieve the data in a single database operation 
you don't have to join multiple things to get the data you directly get the data when the data is available in a single document you don't have to make your query complex in fact right it makes your job easy in fact Immediate data models makes it possible to update uh, related data in a single atomic write operation. So, so immediate data models makes it possible to update related data. Whatever the data you are trying to modify uh, in a hierarchical fashion. What is hierarchical fashion? We're going to talk about. We have a discussion. Don't worry. On the immediate document side, if I look at if I wanted to modify this, contact that phone, and then I have to update this. We'll see that. I'm not uh, finished that side yet. Immediate side. We'll talk about it. So we're done with the schema model. Uh, we'll slowly go towards uh, administration side. Purely administration here onwards. Whatever we're going to discuss. This is also essential knowledge. In fact, we whatever I'm going to discuss is L3 advanced. You know, you can become a advanced DB in the Mongo. Uh, whatever the operations we're going to cover. In fact, it's not just a basic thing. We will cover L3 sharding, sharding configuration, sharding maintenance. That level also will go through in, in fact. So uh, with this almost we covered towards development side, schema design, code operations, all comes under that side. We will talk about in the next class about DB operations slowly. We'll get that side of operations anyway. So any questions from today's class? If not, I'll stop. Fine.